Hey all. Thanks for being here for Deborah Cobelt Live. We're just gonna get right to it. Um, on the phone with me right now is John Cobelt from the very popular number one rated the John and Ken Show on KFI Radio, iHeart Radio, and beyond. John, thanks for being here. Hello, how are you? Good. So we were at the World Series last night, Tony. It was so much fun, but I have to tell you, it was a great game. I'm glad we got to go, took our youngest son. And one of the big things on my mind while we were at the World Series was security because of what happened with that disgusting coward, what he did yesterday in New York City. Uh, we are also on our way to New York City uh, tomorrow because I'm attempting the New York City Marathon, even though I've developed some knee problems. But I'm going to see how far we can get. I'm not going to give up. Um, so, John, why don't you tell me a little bit about what you know about this guy and a little bit about what can people do to keep people safe, in your opinion? Well, there's no practical way to stop a guy who uh, jumps into a truck and decides to drive over a bike path. And you can do it in an instant. So what you have to do is prevent him from getting in that spot. The FBI interviewed him in 2015. They interviewed him because two other terrorists had contacts with this clown. And so he got interviewed as well, but they didn't have a case to put together. See, that's a failure right there. If you have a number of terrorist friends, you come from a country where other, other terrorism, uh, there's a, it's a terrorism hotspot, there's terrorism cells. You can't let them into the country, and then once you find out they're connected to other terrorists, have them live a peaceful life. But, John, it's, our it's, entire it's, country is crawling with these guys and gals, frankly. Well, yeah. We, we, so what do you done, do? We've done something terrible. I mean, it's, it's very difficult to clean it up. He came in on something called a diversity, a diversity visa lottery in 2010 from uh, Uzbekistan. And that was a program where, by lottery, they drew your name out of a hat pretty much. And then uh, you got automatic green card, automatic path to citizenship with no vetting, no background check. Okay, well, well, well do I think? don't care. What do you think's going to happen? Okay, look, I don't care if they're from Uzbekistan, Ireland, down south, east, west. There just has to be a better system in place. We seem to be very behind in this country on keeping track of well, these you, guys. No, you have to, no, you have to care what countries they come from because certain countries have a very, very high concentration of terrorists and other countries don't. So you only have so much manpower and resources. Got it. So you have to target the places that are most likely to produce a bad guy. Got it. But why aren't we actually, you know, reaching out to the folks at Facebook and, and Google and all those places to say, look, we need your help? Because those guys, oh. um, Jesus, every time I turn well, on Facebook, wait a minute, they know where I shop, what I do. They know everything about me. And I'm like, geez, all I did was go on once today and like a couple of pages. Um, they know well, everything face, about me. Facebook and Facebook and Twitter are part of the enemy because they allow ISIS to run propaganda all day and night. ISIS has so many accounts up and so many channels, and there's plenty of uh, terrorists or wannabe terrorists here in America who read and absorb and watch all this stuff that Facebook and Twitter and all the other social media platforms provide. And Facebook and Twitter are run by very, very naive geniuses who didn't understand how much evil there is in the world? I understand, but I thought and, that I understand, but I thought that they have agreed to sort of open their books a little bit and let uh, the government sort of infiltrate in that area. They have to. I mean, you can't just run a terrorist organization openly on on those platforms. Yeah, well, they've been very slow, and uh, they for a long time they didn't cooperate. They thought they had a everyone had a free speech right and a free flow worldwide of information. Okay, I'm well, moving forward, moving they forward. They actually didn't think there were bad people out there. I understand, but moving forward, I, I really feel like that's the only answer. Because if you go into some of these government buildings, honest to God, they have computers sort of that were, you know, with the big apples still on them. You know, the old ones. We're so far behind in this government. We're spending money on everything else. We really need to sort of, um, we need to get that up to speed and beyond. And then, like I said, get the help from those people who, who know. And then people in their private lives if they know of someone or they see somebody who's doing something suspicious or say crazy things, you've got to call the police. I you agree. Absolutely have to. I agree. Look, and that nut in Vegas, he didn't have a profile. He didn't even have a parking ticket. So if you think somebody's weird, I mean, you know me, if I think somebody's odd, I'll be the first to speak up and go, 
that guy's not quite right. Something's wrong. And people say, oh, no, you don't know. Yeah. You say, you know well, what? It's time well, to start speaking up. All right, Steve, look. Steve what do you, Wynn, uh, go ahead. Well, go ahead. What do you think we're going to expect in in, uh, in New York City since we're going to be there to do the marathon? I'm, I'm really nervous about it a little bit, although it's probably going to have terrific security, but still. <clears throat> well, here, here's the kind of security they're going to have, according to the uh, NYPD chief. They're going to have sand trucks and blocker vehicles, the most ever. They have double the observation teams, rooftop observation posts, counter sniper teams throughout the boroughs, and they're going to have heavy weapons teams throughout the city at six locations. And they'll be equipped with the mobile, spot, mobile response capabilities so they can run from one place to the other. So they're going to have probably every single cop on duty, and they're going to bring out all their heavy artillery, and they're going to be standing on rooftops, and they're going to be listening to crowds. Not all of them will be uniformed. And if they see anybody twitch the wrong way or anybody looks suspicious, uh, that guy's going to get dragged away. Right. And, so, uh, I mean, it's not, a little... They're it's... not going to be friendly towards uh, guys with backpacks. Right. I mean, it's a little nerve-wracking, but I trust the city. I think they're going to be on top of it. I mean, there's only, you know, at the end of the day, there's only so much they can do. I mean, New York is probably one of the safest and best places to be at a time like this. So, you know, my heart's really with those people. I think it's awful. I mean, there's a lot of evil, but there's way more good. So we just all have to sort of stay together and, and do better. You know, we have to do better, guys like this. You're right. I mean, the FBI knew about them, and they let them go. So that's the I mean, problem. it just seems every time they catch one of these guys, He's already been interviewed by the FBI. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Let me tell I, you something. If I were interviewed even once by the FBI, I'd probably get the boot. I mean, look at the kind of stuff that goes on. And for some reason, sometimes they do, you know, bend over backwards a little bit for, for, for some of these well, guys, yeah. trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. So maybe it's a time where a little less benefit of the doubt and you got to cooperate. Anyway, John, it, thanks a lot. It's, for, a, go it's ahead. a war, so you got to treat them like enemy soldiers. No, I agree. So, you know... Um, you know, World Series tonight, uh, New York Marathon coming this weekend, um, a lot going on. Uh, grateful that we can even be a part of all this. So um, I just hope we all stay safe. John, thanks for coming on and giving me your insight. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you later. I'll right, see you later. Okay, Bye. thanks. Bye. So now, actually, to my guest who came on initially to talk to me about the New York Ma New York City Marathon, about fitness. He's a friend of mine. I know him. You were a track coach to my kid, right? That's correct. And now he's Cross a country. pretty good baseball player. I'm sure you probably heard about James. I've heard about James. I see him all the time. Yeah, you can. You look at him and you go, "Whoa, that's a little kid that used to run track." And now look at him. He's big. Anyway, uh, Narc Narcisse, thanks for being in, in <laughs> studio. Thank you wrote your first book. How does he do it? I saw this. It popped up on Facebook. I don't know what. And I'm like, what? So now what's he doing? He's an author, too. But uh, this inspired me a lot because I'm working on a book. And you're a guy who thought about writing a book. You went out. You did it. Did it. And now you're here. I'm here. It makes no sense, honestly. My yes, it does. My friends are like, what, what's going on? How did you come up with this idea? Like, how did you write a book? I'm not a writer. I'm a math guy. I'm a physics guy. It just happened. Yeah, you have quite an interesting background. You're yeah. an athlete. You... um. You were uh, you competed for Haiti, at the, right? Yes. You did the long jump for Haiti at the uh, Pan American Games in 2007. You're That's a right. health enthusiast. Uh, you use your expertise to motivate and coach people. You are very motivating. You really are. I mean, you're one of these guys on the side, like keep going, and you're like, <laughs> oh my god. But um, tell me a little bit about your background, because I know a little bit about yep. when you were a younger kid. You give a lot of the credit to your mom. Yeah, I mean, because basically, so I was born in New Jersey. Lived with my yeah. mom, you know, Jersey City. Us Jersey folks. In the house. Lived there until nine years old with my mom and dad. Then my parents split up. Then I moved to Paris with my mom. And there's an interesting story behind how that went down. It's in the book. So I won't, you know, I won't spoil it. But basically, it was kind of a surprise that I ended up in Paris. And then I lived in Paris. It's like you get picked up from school. It's like, honey, <laughs> going to Paris. It's like, what? And then how many years Pretty later? Much. You came ten, back three ten, years? Ten, ten years later. Oh, ten years later. Yeah. So, you know, I grew up from 9 to 19 in France. So a lot of my friends say I'm French, even though I'm not officially French. But those are the, you know, big years. I'm trying to figure out your accent. You're That's from weird. Jersey. You, you grew up somewhat in Paris. 
Um, I do not speak like this. I like a French person. I am very sorry, but you know. But it's, this yeah. is actually very good. So you could do that, and people will think you're from Paris. Sometimes my friends, I do it just just to get a kick out of it, and people like look at me like, hmm, is he faking or not? It's like, no, I'm actually from Paris, but I do speak like this. So, How do, so you're a guy also who who tutors physics. I mean, you're multifaceted. I mean. You know, physics is tough, okay? I couldn't even get through day one of physics in high school. <laughs> but to be good enough at physics, to study it in school, what you laughing about? To be good enough in physics and study it in school and then become a tutor of physics? By the way, I wish I'd known this when my kids were taking physics in school. Come on! Yeah, well, they barely Everybody got... Everybody knows. <laughs> I didn't know. I don't What's know. Up? I didn't know. They just sort of power through it. Um, to be a coach... Um, you've always been interested in doing athletics? Yes, since I was a kid. That was definitely my thing because I was very active, just always running around, jumping stuff, jumping from my balcony, just could not stay still. Wait, so what happened? Did mom put you in something? Because that was my thing. I, I was practically jumping from the balcony. My yeah. mom was like, oh, please, God, I have to do something. They put on, they put skates on me, and the rest was history. You know, I started ice skating my way through jumping off balconies. So, you know. She actually didn't put me through it, but she was happy when she, when I told her that I wanted to, to do sports, like, officially, so she was all for that. She, but And then I tried volleyball, tried basketball, and eventually track and field was the one that stuck because I was fast as a kid, even though in track and field I was not fast because that's real sprinters. I got destroyed every time, but whatever, I'm here. I kept at it, and eventually UCLA, Haiti. So, you know. Keep, just keep keep trying and eventually get better. So you went to UCLA, and what mm -hmm. did you study there? Physics. Studied physics, and you ran there. Yep, that's right. Were you the only guy running at UCLA who was studying physics? Yes. I'm serious, <laughs> you know? Come on. Yes. That's why I say, I mean, th that's just very foreign to me. So I was you're... the only athlete in the physics department, like, and that was a big deal. Like, People were like, why are you doing physics? Just take, take something easier. And I was like, I know athletes. Me, Half of them, easy. they're like in sociology, yeah. you know, or something like that. Let, let's call it. And I'm not bashing anybody. I'm just, No, you know, but just... let's face it. Physics is tough even for physics people. Yeah. So let alone the athletes. It's a lot of time, and uh, but that's the way your brain's wired. Exactly. So then you were running, and then you were running over. Um, you went to Haiti, and you competed. I competed for Haiti because my parents are both originally from Haiti, so I was able to compete for them, even though I'm not a Haitian citizen. But there's a loophole. Somehow. Loophole, if you're fast, hey. mom and dad were born here, come back. <laughs> <laughs> and you can run for us, too. Basically, basically. But what made you feel like you had this book in you? And what is it about? <sighs> What's the purpose? Why did you write it? That's it's like, a good-looking book, too. I have For a guy who self-published for the first time, why did you. you do it? So, okay, throughout the, the last 10 years, I would say, I always get questions about how come you're still fit because I'm not like, I'm not in college anymore, so I'm not like active. How come you still fit? Oh my How God, come that's you look right. Look at the muscles bulging out of your <laughs> arms. And I'm not saying it, you know, for that, but I mean, you are a fit man. I guess I am. And I've, because I, I, I saw, so, you know, I've studied how to stay fit and I've just kept at it. I always li like to learn, so I like to do research. And I'm 40 years old now, and people are like, wait a minute, you're 40. And people are like, I don't believe you, this and that. So then I'm always explaining myself. And eventually, Some of my friends are like, you need to just share your ideas somehow, whether it's on Instagram, maybe have an Instagram page or a blog or whatever. And then specifically, Labor Day weekend, I was at the bungalow in Santa Monica. So shout out to the bungalow, whatever. Oh, I love the bungalow in Santa Monica. That place is fun. And I ran into some of my former students. And one of my students, former students, he was like, man, Narc, you are the same as 12 years ago when you taught me. Like, you have not changed. You look the same. You look younger, maybe. You What is the deal? The And he's like, you should share your ideas, create a website. He exactly said that. Create a website, put it up out there. People will sign up and pay money to see that. And just the way he phrased it, it was like, bingo. Bingo. The next morning, I was like, okay, I'm not going to do a website because I'm not good with those things. But you know what? I can write a book. Do I think I'm good at writing a book? No. But for whatever reason, that felt better. All right. So you've got, what, eight chapters here. How did For those people who feel like they have a book in them. Yeah. How did you even divide them into chapters? I mean, certainly it's not a very long book. No, it's not. But did you just do it on your own and say, you know what? First, I'm going to talk about meals and food and my do's, my don'ts. How did you break it up? Did you have somebody help you so, or it just came right from here? So great question. And just a little, little funny thing is that when I wrote this book, I actually thought I was writing this huge book because for a scientist like me who's never written a page paper long, longer than six pages in college, I got to like 20 pages, you know, on a Word document. I'm thinking, oh, my God, this is so long. This is such a huge book. And then <laughs> when I received the book in the mail, I was like, It's like a little tiny what thing. What is this? This it's is a little, booklet. It's, it's, a, a it's book. kind of a booklet-style book. But it's a booklet. Honestly, it's my style you know? because it's real easy, and yeah. it's kind of like, hey, let me read about this. Yeah. Like, 
So, Why do you eat this way? Let's hear his take on it. And then as far as like how many chapters and everything, I just started writing. I, I didn't know where I was going to end. I just knew I was going to, I want to talk about food in this book because I have volume two. It's going to be about working out. I want to separate those two things because I'm like, let me just do this one step at a time. I'm new. Get feedback. You know, what did I do wrong? What did I do right? And start, try to make it better for the next book. And as far as coming up with the chapters, it honestly, it came naturally. It was really bizarre. It's almost like somebody was writing through me because I'm writing... I'm not a writer, and yet it was it's just it was coming easy, and I'm like, okay, new chapter, boom, write it. And, it, and then the next thing you know, I want to be like creative with the table of contents, so I, instead of putting table of contents, I put menu, and then appetizer, main, like that all, came, it was weird. Pretty creative for a physics yeah. guy. Yeah, it was, I don't, I don't, and honestly, I did it alone. Now, when I say alone, I wrote the book alone, but I did get fr uh, three of my friends, my good friends, helped me with the editing, because my English even though it's supposedly my first language, it's guy. really not. So there was definitely, I had to learn about commas and semicolons and all these. I'm like, what the hell is all this? I just want to write. So they had to help me. Like, okay, you can't say this like this. You got to put this in this way, whatever. So they helped me with the grammar and with the syntax, so to say. But as far as the content, that was all me. The, t the title choices, that was all me. And then the way the book ends, kind of like humorously. Yes, it does. That was me. So, yeah. You know... Amazon also helped you with this, right? They helped put it together. So in other words, I'm saying this because for those of you who think you have a book in you, if Mr. Physics Trainer can do this, you can too. And yes. it's pretty terrific. You know, if you have the idea, yes. go for it. Um, yeah. Do they turn people away sometimes uh, to write a book or anybody can go out there and do one? So do you have any idea? I got to give a shout out to Amazon, first of all, because there they make go. it so easy to Tag do them, would so you please? I got some of our friends who work at Amazon. <laughs> shout out to Jonah, Justin, what's up? Anyway... Yeah, Amazon makes it so much easy, so easy because you write the book and then you got to put it in a certain format. Now, the formatting part is the part that sucks. It just takes forever. You got to make it easier. Blogs Amazon. and everything. Now, I could have paid somebody to do it, but I was like, nope, I'm stubborn. I'm gonna do this on my own. I'm gonna figure it out. So that took a long time, relatively speaking, to do it. But once you do it, you send it to Amazon. They review it, make sure that there's like no major errors in terms of like the, the not the content, but in terms of like the format. And then they send it. They send you a copy. They say, okay, now check it out, read it. Is this what you look? What, what which, is this what you want? Did you design the cover too, or everything. did they help you with 100%, it? Hundred percent, everything. This is all me. Did now, they give you like a template and say, no. put picture here, no. words I, here. No, you just did it. I just read Kinda blogs. Like, I read ideas. I'm like, and I just yeah. But you see how easy that is. I know that it's there's like, yeah. self publishing. A lot of people self publish. But this is really, it's like putting out your Christmas card and calling Shutterfly. It's just easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. And then once you're ready, hit that publish button, and that's it. It's, it's, it's published. And then just wait and see what happens, and then send it to friends, whatever. Is there a cost to do this? or Zero. Okay, I did you hear not that? spend a dime. Like nothing. So you spent nothing. Nothing. And what the are they doing? Version. I guess I guess it's because they're thinking that they'll make the back end on sales. Well, the thing is, the print version is it's an on demand thing. So basically, it's not like there's a warehouse with like fifty books printed by Narc. No. Sure, there are. So it's like no, when like... somebody orders it, it gets printed. It's print on demand. That way, I don't have to pay anything. And then you get to choose. I get to choose my price. I can charge anything I want. And they get a percentage of it though. Exactly. And they, and they try to guide you in terms of your price because... This is unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Basically, for a Kindle version, if you stay within $3 and $10, you get 70% royalties. So 70% royalties if you stay within that frame. If you go lower, you get only 35%. If you go higher, only 35%. Okay, look, everyone has a story in them. And if you want to get it out there, it's a no-brainer, right? They yeah. will help you. But I don't yeah. see those, so they're, they're hoping that they make the money on the back end. Exactly. By doing this for people for nothing. Exactly. Um, wow. Yep. Wow. Yep. So tell me a little bit about your fitness routine. And for someone like me, yep. who's doing the New York Marathon, I did the L.A. and then I followed it up with uh, uh, then a half marathon in Hollywood. I climbed some volcano along the way and I injured my knees somewhat <laughs> because I couldn't stop. You know, mm. you know that mentality, right? You just yes. don't stop. Mm -hmm. And, you know, very often, you know, living here in L.A. and I live on the west side of L.A., maybe a friend will be, you know, some miles down in Venice or Playa del Rey, and they're like, how did you get here? I'm like, I walked. I'm just somebody who put on my sneakers and go. I don't even think about it. And for me to have a little bit of an injury in my knees, and sadly it's a little bit of arthritis because yep. I've overused them for too long, what would you tell somebody like me, and if you're going to say don't do it, don't bother, because I've decided I'm in it, I'm going to do as best I can without furthering injuring myself, you know? Okay. Uh oh. This is 
I'm an athlete, and I've definitely done things when I was not feeling good, where I was injured, and I was like, I don't care. I'm just going to push through it. And most of the time, things worked out. But sometimes things don't work out. So there are certain injuries that I would know not to go. Like Achilles tendon, no, I'm not messing with that because if that ruptures, I'm in a cast for like six months. I'm not having that. But, you know, sore knees, depending on the soreness, you know. But everything you're saying, it seems like it's more like cartilage. It's a cartilage And I'm actually writing volume two right now, and I'm on the section on joints, so I'm reading about cartilage. You can put me in there. So, and cartilage, you can't get it back. It's not like, oh, it, it'll heal. Eh, it's not really. So, I don't understand why there have not been more developments with cartilage. Um, you know, they can inject you. I believe they, they uh, what's it called? Where they take the, your blood oh, out. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's That's that what, called? I'm forgetting the name, oh, anybody. The name Call in. Be. I know what you're talking about, though. Um, the and they can do that, but that hasn't been proven. Yeah. They also have a fake substance that they could sort of inject there. You would think they could give you a fake heart. Yeah, it's they weird. give you somebody else's heart. How could they not give me a little bit of, you know, cushion? Yeah. You know, a little bit of rubber. You and know, something actually, in there. It's actually demoralizing. Even I've been reading about college the last two days, and I'm like, wait a minute, college just goes down. It doesn't go back up. Like, what's the deal? So it seems like it's bound to go down to either zero or very low Don't at some this. point in your life. Now, as, as as far as how you manage it throughout your life, you, you can keep it steady or keep it declining, not as fast. But if you do things like running a marathon when you're already low cartilage, not a good idea. So... My recommendation for anything you say is to don't do it. Well, I doubt I'll get through 27 miles, let's face it. But since I've already gone through getting there and the whole experience, I decided I'm going to take myself to New York, get there, go through the experience, at least do as much as I can without feeling like, oh, gosh, you're pushing it, Deborah. Stop as soon as I feel like I can. Now, a friend of mine said, you know what? Wait a year. I don't want to wait a year because I don't know if I have another marathon in me. You know, so I'm just going to experience it. That's all. I would say just walk it. Just take it easy. Oh, my God. I am walking it. Are you? I'll be the last one there. I'll be but, the person you see on the news going, and also, it's midnight. Taking breaks, you know, like, because even though you're just walking, you're still, still poundage on I, your knee every oh, single step. So, yeah, just walking sounds a lot easier, but still. So definitely walking, but slowly walking, like a casual walk. And if taking a break. Like, you're just there for the experience. You're just there to, you know, to be like, oh, I did the, the New York Marathon. I'm with a bunch of people. I'm healthy. I'm Beautiful alive. Beautiful experience. You know? That's right. Yeah. I'm healthy. I'm alive. I'm not going to let you know? any crazy tourists because um, dampen be, my spirit. I'll tell go. you what. I'm exactly. going to go there, and I'm going to be in support of those people that live there and just Hell say, yeah. look, we're going to continue on. And for those of us who are a little injured, you just do the best you can without, I say, without further injuring yourself. Sometimes people, you can push it, but in my case, I don't think I can. No, you shouldn't. I've also raised money for Team for Kids, and uh, that meant a lot to me. So the people that supported me, I want to do a little bit of the run for them, too. So um, what does running and walking do for you mentally? For me? Yeah. So it's just kind of weird because even though I coach track and field and I coach cross country, I don't actually go out on runs. It's oh, so you just torture people. <laughs> That's what you do. <laughs> what I, I remember you. They're like, oh, no, it's Narc. They would hide it's, from you behind trees, yes, Narc. It's very ironic. But ah. what I but I do do sprints on every Friday with two of my friends. We go to Venice Beach, and we do hardcore sprints on the soft sand. And I, and I love sprinting all out. And I do it on sand because it's good for the joints, and it's actually kind of hard. And it's just you on the beach in L.A. You know, that's why I'm like, I'm not leaving in L.A. because it's 80 degrees. It's November. Yeah. So, but as far as going out for a run, it's not my thing. But I know some friends who love going out for a run. It just, you know, stimulates their mind. It gets that gets them that runner's high. So I also like you know, walking through neighborhoods. I will always take different little roads. I don't always take the main road. I'll take back alleys. I'll do all kinds of things because I love to just see what's out there. You know, and I do that also on a bicycle. I just yep. love to see what's what's around. It makes me so happy. Yep. And there's always someone that you can see and say hello to. There's a real connection to doing that. Um, it, it really does a lot for my brain, my, my mind, which is another reason why I think New York will be exciting because you pass through, if you can get there, five boroughs and different mm -hmm. neighborhoods. And, um, you know, I wish there could be a little chariot waiting for me and <laughs> just, you know, <laughs> drive me back. But, but, but I can't. Somebody says if you stop, you just go... Okay, I'm done. And then you get on a subway, and I'm just like, how anticlimactic can that be? You know, but we'll see. Um, what would you like as a takeaway from this book? What do you want people to know most about you? What, and, you know, in writing this book, 
how does he do it? What is that about? How I does he do it? I would say the number one takeaway, it's not even about me. I mean, I feel like anybody could have written this book. It's not like, oh, it's about narc, whatever. It's like, no, not really. It's more about like cook for yourself. Like if that's the number one thing, if there's one thing I gotta say, if you cook for yourself, half of the issues as far as like bad eating go away because you're not gonna be adding all of that oil, all of that salt, all, like you just won't because you'd be like, this is crazy. So when I started cooking for myself, that's when I got these muscles. Like, just, it was like Okay, a everybody, month. that's all you need to do, <laughs> look like this. I, I swear. <laughs> I was super skinny, and people, I got, I got when, if I show you pictures, like, throwback Thursday, whatever. Today, is today Thursday? No, Thursday, Wednesday, but whatever. Oh, why didn't you send them to me? I know, me? my bad. Next time, but, next book, yeah. put the before and after pictures. I thought about doing that, too, on this book. Like, putting in, like, a before and after, but I was like, That's eh, okay, that's you're teasing cheesy. people a little bit with the first. It's not but, cheesy. I don't know. If don't you know. want to look like this, and you don't want to look like that, <laughs> um, cook for yourself. What do you like to cook for yourself? Rice is my big thing. Rice. I can't. See, I can't do rice. Rice is so easy. Anybody can do rice. That's what I'm saying. It's easy. That's what I'm saying. I'm not a chef. I just make rice. Rice cook it, put water in it. Okay, but there's no Press protein the in that. There's no, no protein. That's what I'm saying. That's the first thing. Then I then I have my little super fa fancy grill where I make my salmon. I make my steak. I make my chicken. And then my ground beef. And then have my vegetables. And then that's pretty much it. And then once I have my eggs. Like it's very simple. That's why I wrote that. I want to let, to let people know that. It's actually pretty simple to be healthy, so to say. Like, I'm not like this guy who's, like, weighing my food and, like, you know, putting some... Like, I'm not doing that. The weighing of the food does not work. It doesn't work for me. Like, some people, they do that. I'm like, hey, cool for you, but yeah. I'm not trying to do that. And yeah. I want to also make my meal in, like, 20 minutes. I got things to do. I'm not trying to be cooking for an hour. So. But, again, you wrote this because you want people to know, hey, cook for themselves, and what else? I mean, you clearly cook wanted to inspire yes, people I mean, to what? To, to, to be fit, yeah, to um, I guess. think and better, be positive. Because you didn't exactly have the easiest childhood, yeah. even though mom was pretty terrific. Yep. But, you know, you were just hit with a jolt and uh, moved out of your comfort zone, if you will, yep. and you had to make peace with that. Yep. You know, everybody has a story, and we don't all get away with it easy and clean. I agree. You know, and I think when people write stories like this, um, it just shows that we're not alone in the game, right? And I, and I guess also, I mean, this, what you said is, is exactly spot on, because when I was writing the book, initially I was just going to talk about myself, mm -hmm. and then I was going to talk about the food, and I was like, you know what, let me combine both. So then that's why the, the, the first part is like, who the hell is Mark Narcisse, to kind of like let, let people know who I am, where I came from. Because I think people find that interesting. Yeah, but oh, of course, you need a you personal know. spin on yeah. everything. Real, a real one. Too. Yeah, exactly. And like, this is real. And this is real. This, this, this is the real story. Like my, I called my mom, and I and I told, and I said, I need to, I need to read you this first chapter, and she was like, What is this for? Is this for a paper? I'm like, Just listen to it. She was like, Okay, what is this for? I'm like, It's for a book. You're gonna put that story out for everybody to read? Yeah. Why? And then she was like, <laughs> And then I was like, oh, I have to. You know, people gotta know about me. And she's like. Oh my God! People are gonna know that I kidnapped you. What's gonna happen to me, like, <laughs> Mom? But that was thirty years ago. You're fine. Like nobody's coming for you. It's there was good. a reason for the kidnapping, everyone. So <laughs> you, when you read, how does he do it? You'll figure this out, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And then my dad actually, I did not tell my dad about it because I was, I was, because he's in the book, and he, if you read it, you'll know why I didn't say anything about my to my dad. But this weekend, he read the book and he sent me this picture. With him with the book, and he said the book is awesome. Well done. And I was like, I'm so okay, proud cool. of you. My dad is cool with the book. I'm happy for you. I'm proud of you. So what's next? Volume two. Volume ja two. Ja Are you working on it already? I'm already. Christmas edition. I am. I have done four chapters, and this one's gonna be much longer. So I, I think by January we'll be ready. Not oh. Christmas, January, because I gotta take my time. Because the first book, I could not stop writing. It was like I will get home, write, get home, write. I couldn't stop. Now it's like I'm relaxed. Take your time, and now that you know I'm busy with other stuff, tutoring, whatever, so I'm just taking my time to write it. And December, I feel like it's not a good time for a book to come out because everybody's got holiday issues, ho not issues, holiday things to deal with. So I'm like, you know what? They're holiday <laughs> issues, believe me. I just saw bad moms. <laughs> All of us have holiday issues. I was like, let's wait till January. That way, it'll be after the holidays, and be like, okay, here's volume two. And so that way, it gives me time to, to take it easy, to write it at, at a slower pace because the first one was like a little bit too quick, in my opinion. Three weeks to write a book. That's just nuts, but I just couldn't stop. So now I'm taking my time. All right, you're a real inspiring guy, Nark. I'm really uh, excited that you came on. And for all those friends of mine and all those people who want to write a book, How Does He Do It by Nark Narcisse. He did it. Pick it up. It's an easy read. It's a great read. It's inspiring, and I loved it. Thanks for being here. Yeah, and a shout-out to Bad Moms. Got to see and uh, Suzanne Todd. That's her film. Got to see that over the weekend. It's really terrific. Make sure everybody goes there, too.
Nark, thanks for being here. Thanks, Deborah. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Coming and I'll up. let you know how I do when I come back from New York. Okay. There we go. All right. Thanks, cool. everybody. Thanks for being here for another uh, fun edition, interesting edition of Deborah Cobell Live. And we'll see you next time.